while we eagerly await the release of 4K scalers to play retro consoles on a flat panel, I'm doing quite the opposite by downscaling modern consoles to a widescreen CRT. I've wanted to exclusively cover downscaling for some time, so I'll be covering more devices in the coming months. You'll often hear terms like progressive, interlaced, 480i and 240p used quite a bit. So if you aren't familiar with these terms, then I suggest you watch Displaced Gamer's video on the history of 240p. Now why would anyone want to downscale their crispy high definition consoles to play in analog 15kHz? For me, it all comes down to convenience and preference. The versatility of my widescreen Grundig to display in 4x3 and 16x9 makes it the pillar of my setup, like this TV was made for downscaling. I know, I know, it's a pretty niche user case to play modern games in standard def, but think of it as putting pineapple on a pizza. No one can tell you how to enjoy your food, even if it is wrong and a slap in the face to all Italians. I've used several downscalers over the years in different scenarios to know all the features that I need in a single device. The ability to output 240p and 480i, downscales with little to no artifacts, can accept input resolutions as high as 1080p, does all of this with as little lag as possible, and has easy picture adjustments. TV1 has a line of scalers made with their technology called Corio 2, but searching this on eBay usually turns up with no results. Only certain models can downscale to 240p, which are all listed in a very detailed shmups forum post by user Dokotai. So I recommend searching with combinations like TV1, TV1, followed by the model number with and without hyphens. The model I purchased was the 1TC2750. It's powered by an external 12 volt supply, making them surprisingly small. The 750 has two inputs and one output, all by DVI and with the right connector can input and output multiple flavors of RGB and component YPBPR. I took Dokatai's advice from one of his YouTube videos and ran the HDMI input into a VGA DAC to then a VGA to DVI converter. And on the output is DVI to VGA, which I wired RGBS to SCART and directly routed the audio from the input. Rather than take my chances with C-Sync, I installed a switch to toggle a 470 ohm inline resistor to attenuate the voltage. And good thing I did because C-Sync runs a little high at 1.7 volt peak to peak, and the attenuated voltage drops to a safe 600 millivolt for my consumer SCART equipment. If you're running sync directly to a pro monitor or extra matrix switcher, then you'll be fine without the resistor, although it never hurts to have it there as a failsafe. The Core U needs some setup for 240p output, and I don't think I could have done this without Dokotai's tutorial post with all the necessary links and files. David Wang Choi made available an XML file for the 750 model, which has all the resolutions pre-programmed to output 240p. To flash them to the Core U, you'll need an RS-232 cable to interface with a PC by USB. Device Manager showed the Core U associated to COM port 8, so I could go ahead and flash the latest firmware. Next, in the Core U tool suite, I went to configure and set the COM port to pass the initial test. If your COM port is anything but 3, then you'll need to alter the XML file before loading, otherwise you'll run into errors. Then load the file, tick resolution and write to unit. If you connect the Corio to a 15kHz CRT now, it'll show an out of range signal. So in the basic menu, select one of the new 240p resolutions, set it to the correct DVI input, change the sync output, and then click pixel so it displays in full screen. You may also need to change the source from SIS to DVI, and if for some reason you don't see the downscaled video, you can scroll through the OSD and change it directly on the unit. Now save the settings by scrolling all the way to system and save power on settings and hit menu to write to memory. The first thing I wanted to test on the Corio was lag. Mark from the Retro channel made a very easy to follow guide on building a Tang Nano Time Sleuth 
which is sort of the Diet Coke of the full-fledged version. This displays an HDMI signal in different resolutions, with a flashing white box which gets detected by the photo sensor to measure the video lag. For a CRT that begins each frame or field at the top left of the screen, this is essentially the point of zero lag, and for a 60Hz signal, it completes the frame at the bottom right in 16 milliseconds. So, for every 16 milliseconds read at the top left of the time sleuth, means there's one frame of lag. Downscaling 720 to 240p gives a stable 28 milliseconds, which is just under 2 frames. 720p down to 480i has variable lag from 19 milliseconds up to 35, which is equivalent of approximately 1 to 2 frames. And I interpret this as the scalar processing a portion of lines at a time before it works its way back up to the start of the frame where it takes longer to buffer. 1 to 2 frames is still low, but inconsistent lag can make timing button presses more difficult. 480 down to 240p has the same variable 1 to 2 frames, but this time it's counting down the lag before resetting to 35 milliseconds whereas downscaling 480p to 480i has a consistent 1.4 frames of lag. The Core U couldn't interpret a 480i input. Whether that's a limitation of the HDMI to VGA converter, I'm not sure, but I personally don't have a use case for deinterlacing and downscaling 480i anyway. Unfortunately, the Tang Nano Time Sleuth doesn't output 1080p for me to test lag. So, I went with the old-fashioned side-by-side 240p frame test. With the Mr. FPGA's SNES core, I'm sending the 1080p HDMI signal to the Core U, which is downscaled on the widescreen Grundig, and lagless 240p analog video is simultaneously sent to the PVM below as the control. The Core U could only display an HDMI signal when the Mr. was set to low latency single buffer mode, so there's potentially an additional frame of lag. 1080 down to 240p had variable 2 to 3 frames of lag, and 1080p down to 480i had even worse 3 to 4 frames. Even if I subtract a frame for the Mr's upscaling, that's still on the higher side. And then it dawned on me that not passing audio through the choreo and bypassing it to the output will cause some audio to video desynchrony, but it's nothing that I've so far noticed. The Spears & Munsell Blu-ray is a test pattern disc that I purchased to see how the Core U scales the video for each input and output resolution. The two screens I found most helpful were the Circle Jaggies pattern and the Upsampling Error pattern with black and white scrolling lines. With an HDMI to component converter, the PS3 outputs directly to the multi-format PVM20L5 to get a basic idea how they look without scaling. The Jaggies pattern was uniform in 480p and even crisper in 720. And then there was ever so slight transitional movement of black and white lines in the upsampling pattern, mainly on 480p. So these are both essentially our baseline of the original video source to better understand the magic behind the Corio's downscaling algorithms. When downscaling 480p to 480i, the Jackies pattern was very close to the native video, and there was a clean 240p downscale by evenly dropping lines. So 480 down to 240p has good static downscaling, and it's the upsampling pattern where things get interesting. I'm trying my best to articulate what's potentially going on here, and my interpretation is the black and white lines are held in memory for some time, then when it grabs the next sample to process, the lines have alternated in perfect intervals, therefore causing this slow shift. If I'm right, then it's kinda cool to see buffering in real time. The scrolling in 480i looked closer to the control, so 480p overall downscales really well. Moving on to 720p, downscaling to 480i alternates the line averaging with an ever so slight organized pattern in the jaggy circle. As for 720 down to 240p, the first third of the circle perfectly line drops, but the remaining two thirds are blended. And just to clarify that these static control patterns don't necessarily resemble gameplay apart from fuzzy text, so you shouldn't see anything unusual in normal circumstances. 
Step frame in the upsampling pattern better shows the averaging with certain lines taking turns to remain solid, while others are blended with half black and half white lines. Step framing 480i looks much the same, but when played at full speed is closer to the native 720p control. Lastly, onto 1080p, downscaling to 480i and 240p have similar intervals of line dropping in between averaging a set of lines, resulting in an evenly uneven pattern, if that makes sense. 1080 is a 45 times scale of 240p, so not a perfect integer. However, 270 is, divisible 4 times into 1080, which got me thinking if I could circumvent the uneven 1080p downscaling by outputting 270p instead. I altered an existing template resolution, but when you change one thing, it affects another, and the vertical refresh dropped to 54Hz, and I'd rather have uneven scan lines than drop frames. Lag and scaling really is a mixed bag. 480p seems like the best resolution to set my consoles to, seeing that downscaling to 480i has the lowest lag, and 240p has the cleanest dropping of lines. But to save me flipping between resolutions on the console when I do play on the projector, I'm sticking to 720p. Well then you may ask why I'm not bothered by the 2.2 frames of lag? Well, displaying 720p on my LCD projector even in game mode actually gives me 3 frames of lag, which I never really noticed in gameplay, so theoretically I should have a better time downscaling on the CRT. Now here's the tricky part with the core use picture adjustments. The video and resolutions need some tweaking to get the video centered and filling the whole screen, but some settings are global, whilst others affect particular presets. And then there's further settings that only adjust output resolutions. Sounds confusing, and it is. But basically the source menu are the global adjustments that move the top left position and stretch or squeeze the image from the bottom right. The window menu can be saved to each preset and lets you reposition the image within a predefined window. And then each resolution has its own HV size and position. However, Stretching and shifting horizontally can cause the image to darken, and going too far out of the Koryu or TV's vertical range has more problematic repercussions. You get 10 presets, and I've optimized for all the scenarios that I showed in the lag and resolution tests. As the source menu adjustments carry over to all presets, I adjusted this first and flicked between the other resolutions to make sure there was still sync. So now let's see if all that stretching messed with the scaling. The 480p circle still drops lines to achieve 240p, but then I go into the upsampling pattern and... Ah oh, crap, it's the aspect ratio police. I get that stretching to fill the screen has somewhat affected a 480p downscale, but unless I'm taking close-up scanline photos, sitting back at a normal distance I really can't even tell when a 2D outline spills over two scan lines. Speaking of, the global source settings can shift the picture vertically to better align sprites and text, but after messing with aspect ratio, that'd be chasing the impossible. So what do you think is going to look better for downscaling Sonic Mania? 720p to 240p or 480p to 240p? 720 downscale to 240 has a slight edge in sharpness versus the ever so slightly blurrier 480p downscale. But 2D pixel art in 480i looks smooth and pasty, so I'll reserve this resolution strictly for modern 3D games. Playing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom looks fantastic in 480i. Fine text is plenty readable, the colors in the environment pop with richness, plus the benefit of those dark CRT blacks and the Koryu scales with such fluid motion without screen tear or skipping a frame. To me, the ability to downscale to 480i is just as important as 240p, as playing a game with polished graphics in 240p reduces too much vertical resolution, especially text. Which has me torn for the Panzer Dragoon remaster. 
I can display in 480i to preserve the 3D visuals, or downscale to 240p just as it looked on the Sega Saturn. The difference from the couch is really insignificant, and without small text, I actually prefer 240p on this one. Now, don't think for a second that I'm ignoring the loss in detail when downscaling. This is especially true for relatively simple 3D models that are only further downgraded when displaying in 480i. But the blow taken from the resolution is slightly cushioned by the lack of aliasing that you can only see in native 720p on the projector versus a 480i downscale. First person shooters that have been given the widescreen treatment and much needed gyro aiming are also a solid case for 240p downscaling. And for me, this is the pinnacle of revisiting the games of my pre-adolescent childhood. 7th gen consoles like the Xbox 360 typically render games in 720p and downscale internally to 480i on its analog output, essentially doing the same thing as the Koryu. So this will be interesting to see if downscaling with the Koryu looks the same as outputting 480i RGB directly from the console. Side by side, I tried my best but couldn't see any appreciable difference. Remember that my audio bypass now causes audio lag? Well, Guitar Hero has a test for video and audio lag, which surprisingly turned up with zero. So I can rock on and slap at the bass in 240p. This is probably going to go down as expected, but let's downscale the Neo Geo Mini in 720 and compare against native 240p on the Mr. FPGA's Neo Geo Core. So for the Neo Geo Mini video output, there's only one word to describe it. So has the TV1 proven to make the best downscaler that satisfies all my criteria? While it does output both 240p and 480i seamlessly without screen tear or frame skips, and it's one of the only scalers to accept 1080p, but knowing that the lag's there, it's best reserved for video over gameplay. 720 and 480p downscaled is a mixed bag of lag, but hasn't ruined my experience whatsoever. As for easy picture adjustments, well, they're all there, but they are not easy. Once you get all the presets dialed in for each downscaling scenario, they should seamlessly carry over to other HD consoles, which makes these presets more of a set and forget ordeal. I've written my settings in the description, but keep in mind that these are 720 pixels wide and therefore best suited to a 16x9 display. So there could be heavy overscan on a 4x3 CRT, or you may choose to squeeze everything to fit your display, which you'll then have to explain yourself to the aspect ratio police. Sure, it's not perfect with variable lag and rigid alignment options, but downscaling 480p and beyond to 480i and 240p earns the Core U 750 the Marco Retro tick of approval. Thanks all for watching and happy gaming.